Hey everybody. So this particular research paper is called A Token is Worth Over 1,000 Tokens, Efficient Knowledge Distillation Through Low Rank Clone. And it's put out by two universities as well as Baidu Eek. This particular research paper is very interesting overall. It's um, been about a week or so since I've put out a I told you so <laughs> type of video. So here we are. Uh, and then with this particular method, I'll say overall, uh, so beyond the philosophical aspects of this method getting into like the real world what can this do this is very much a compression method for lm models right that's essentially and effectively what it is very effective compression if you have a commercial use case for that i happen to be i would say probably uh one of a handful of foremost experts on this particular type of compression at the moment so just putting that out there um into the world i am very uh, familiar with exactly what is going on here and i'm going to explain it to you i've made a lot of videos actually on this particular method in the past which is why i'm very familiar with it this is utilizing and uh, formalizing a topic that I've been talking about for a while now on this channel, which is the fact that models don't actually learn formally from a data set. They learn from abstractions of the data set, which has philosophical and real world implications overall. But I can't state it enough that like it's not the actual data set that matters, right? It's the abstraction of the data set. And that's very important because that means that like no matter what you can do or what you do to the data set, I just need an abstraction of the data set for and again that's like uh across the gamut as to what the impact of that right if you want to put controls into it if you want to put poison into it whatever it's it's easily to extract out either controls or poison right? just pointing that out within that and then so diving deep into kind of what uh, this paper gets into <laughs> this paper, um, the method that they utilize and what they do in this is very interesting, right? It's so they do do something within this that I haven't done on this channel before, which is so I've broken this concept down before as, uh, so low rank projections and low rank projection matrices, right? Which they do as well. And then, so that's the whole point of this concept is that, so you essentially, you take the knowledge of the model or and what I've been playing, what I've played around with in the past is data sets related to the model. And then you take that low rank projection as opposed to the actual data set, then you train the model on that. Whereas, but with this particular method, what they're doing is uh, the low rank projection is based off of the weights, the model weights as opposed to the data set, which is very interesting overall, right? So you take, um, uh, essentially what they do is, uh, so this is the math behind it. And then this is the method, right? And then so they take uh, it's a, a llama three three model, right? We'll say llama three B model in this particular instance, and then they take the weights of the llama three B model, and then the student weights equal the teacher weights plus the low rank projection of the teacher weights. So uh, the the like. Um, uh, abstraction of the weights, right? Think of it, I, I think of it in my head, like, kind of like DNA sequencing, right? <laughs> like you're taking like essentially like two parents and then uh, mixing and, 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 and combining kind of like that DNA and that's the, the output result of the student. And then so the student is simply just a clone of the, the higher ranked model, right? Literally all you're doing is teacher weights plus projection low rate projection the matrix projection of the teacher weights distilling those getting a new weight calculation which would be ws weights of the student right uh, and then that becomes essentially like the the whole entire learning process and the, and the whole entire process within that like i can't state that enough it, to me it, it still baffles me to this day but uh, a lot of people like question around that right that is literally the process that you're doing in order to create this distilled student model. So like the distilled student model is not trained in any way. It's not like, and, and uh, there's no data set, there's no data that the student model ever learns from. It's learning 100% just purely from the weights and then a uh, 
figment of the weights of the teacher uh, and then those become the weights of the student and then in this instance the student is oftentimes able to and in some instances able to outperform the teacher which is uh and in like uh, unique instances right which is i mean incredible overall and and, and not so in, in instances is where it doesn't outperform the teacher it's still you're getting um the, the cost to token trade-off uh, ratio is is very significant, right? Essentially, these models perform very well <laughs> uh, for their size. They punch above their weight, and they're not trained on actual data, right? Um, and then that's I, I I can't state that and go into that enough, like the the impact, <laughs> the meaning of that, uh, and then to me, so philosophically, right? I've been talking about this for a long time, like. Um, any data set in and of itself is in and of itself a, a human construct, right? <laughs> and then so uh, within that, uh, the models are actually learning from the human construct. They learn from something, right? And then so the question has been, what do they learn from? And then so uh, I know that they don't learn from human constructs and I learn, I know that they don't learn from voodoo magic. Like those are the two things that like I know are 100% not true. They can learn based on the human construct, but they're not learning from the human construct. Like they're learning from something else. There's a deeper layer there basically, right? And then so what is that deeper layer? Like how do they do it? The mechanism, right? And that's low rank projections. And then so that's all boils, like the interesting thing to me within this is that they're doing everything that I've done with regards towards like data sets, tort clustering, like all of that relates to all of this, right? The difference here is, is that they're doing it with the model weights, uh, which is, I mean, to me, it's, uh, it proves overall that like literally every component of these models then is, is an abstraction, right? Like, I mean, like, uh, these models are the platonic form. Like, I guess like that would be the simplest way to, uh, equate it, right? Like that's, uh, like the simplest way that I can think of to break that down into English. <laughs> like, uh, so diving into this, like, like, um, and, and looking into like what the actual like technical implementation of this is, it's very straightforward to, to me to, to set this up. So I've set up a few different things within this. Like, first of all, I've, I've allowed you to, uh, call and, and just chat with the model. And then I'm going to demonstrate for you, like, kind of exactly the, the visualization of this distillation process, right? This, this, um, weight transfer process and how that looks because it's it's not more complicated than i'm making it out to be right and then so uh very first thing i want to know and highlight so as they mentioned within the research paper they do make the models and the code available on hugging face and then so i found it's um this collection here um and then so uh you have the different models uh of and then there's the 1.5b base uh, uh fine-tuned uh and then instruction fine-tuned and then uh 1.7b and 1.7b uh, fine-tuned and then so i'm using the the uh base uh the 1.5b base and then, so it's just loading and then, well, I'll go through the, the notebook here. So very first uh, one is to load the model, right? And then I'm bringing up, I, I should mention, uh, because so uh, on Hugging Face uh, here, when you go, the very first thing you have to, so you need to agree to share your contact information to access this model. And then, so you'll need to do this uh, and then you'll need to like share your information and then uh, you'll need to like accept the, uh, that authorization within your hugging face token within this so there there's a few steps within that that i've gone through highlighting that um and pointing that out but so uh within that it's once you do those steps and and it's literally like it, it'll give you instant approval once you just uh, hit okay there on the hugging face thing um and then so uh from there you just load the model um and then it's just the model and tokenizer and then i ask it the capital of france is and then it says, Capital of France is Paris, Capital of France is the United States of Washington, D.C., Capital of the United Kingdom is London, Germany is Berlin, Italy is Rome, Spain is Madrid. So it's just, you know, standard, like, a uh, low parameter model behavior, like, where it's just, you know, like, it's predicting, right? <laughs> that's, that's what they do. They, they just out output and predict. Uh, and then the second one, you so you just, you want to always run this first one first, and then once this first one loads, if you want to a a enter new prompts, you can just... Uh, Cut, copy and paste within the, the quotation marks um, and then just put in whatever you want within there and then you can change it out and then just hit play on repeat, right? Um, and that'll allow you to do that. 
And so what exactly and what uh, really is going on within um, this uh, model, right? And then so, uh, and how exactly is this process working overall, like a kind of a visualization. And so essentially, you take uh, two models, right? So we have our teacher model and our student model. And then so just for simple demonstrative purposes, the teacher model has six dimensions, the student model has three dimensions. And then these are matrix arrays, right? And then so that's what we're dealing with within this. And then so when we're dealing with dimensions, this matrix array has six dimensions, this matrix array has three dimensions. <laughs> like uh, So very much lines up with the mathematics of it, right? Um, and then so within this, what we're doing is we take the, the uh, just a randomly initiated sample of the, 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 the teacher's weights. So these are the, the teacher's weights, like, uh, you know, like, I'm just making these numbers up here, but like, let's pretend that these are the, the teacher's weights that I, I trained them on a data set, and the data set then forms into the weights, and then these are the, the teacher weights. And then so from there, I take uh, and I do this mathematical equation, right? So uh, the weights of the student model equal the weights of the teacher model. So this plus the projection of this. So uh, just the, the like uh, uh, like the low dimensional projection of this. So and then we, we combine those together and then we get this. The output is this uh, and then uh, or, or sorry, the, the output is, is this. <laughs> uh, this is our so this is our low rank projection of this here and then the WS. So this is our WP. Sorry, I, I explained that a little bit wrong up there. And then the, uh, this this is our, our WS, uh, our full output here that we get uh, as the end result. And then so, yeah, cool. So then there's our WS. And then so that's the full math and visualization as to what is going on here. Uh, and then as I mentioned, right, so the very first, the only thing that's missing within this is the very first step is that these weights, the teacher weights, are trained on data, right? So what exactly is that data that they're trained on? Uh, I'll highlight that here specifically. So like going to Hugging Face, whenever you go to these models, if you go to the model cards, they have a Generally, sometimes they're just they're totally blank, uh, but generally they have a lot of information on the model cards, and then this one has a lot of information. Uh, and then we can go through, it's got like a ton, uh, maybe this is the wrong one. Uh, yes, uh, well, so, uh, what I'm looking for very specifically is the the uh, training. Uh, here we go, training data uh, within this, and then so within the training data, they are they used the FineWeb EDU, which is a 10 billion token data set, uh, as well as the Open Hermes 2.5 450 million tokens data set. Just call it and giving these guys a mention, right? Because like uh, perhaps on a few of my videos, you might have seen like I've had like News Hermes uh, open sometime. Like I, so I utilize like these guys as models a lot, uh, or News Research, and then they're the ones that make the Hermes models. And then so uh, I'm very familiar with them. Like it's uh, like it's cool to me to see that like other researchers use these models as well. Like in their data sets, it's like. Um, they have a lot of uh, advantages, <laughs> and and they're very good with the, uh, their data sets and their models. So just uh, highlighting and pointing that out. Uh, overall, I just thought that was interesting to to see there. Um, but so uh, overall, um, a token is worth over one thousand tokens, efficient knowledge distillation through low rank clone. And then so kind of the, uh, uh, again, the uh, actual advantage of this, the real world advantage of this is that you get this, right, which is essentially uh, a lot more efficient and cheaper and uh, LLM compression, uh, AI compression <laughs> is the best way to, to put that uh, in real world terms, right? Like this, this if you're doing a lot of calculations, a lot of, uh, you need a lot of models, um, a lot of calls to the models, a lot of use cases for the models, et cetera. Um, this will save you a lot of money um, in the end. And it's, it's uh, I laid out simplistically, right? But so to me, it's simple. And hopefully I've laid it out simplistically to you. Um, and if you need any sort of uh, commercial help with it, uh, feel free to, to reach out on that. Um, and then I'll, I, I am selective, but uh, I would uh, reach back. Um, yeah, like, uh, and overall, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.